Welcome to the Mental Health Hour and welcome to our World Mental Health Day special for 2023. That was yesterday, October 10th, as it is, I believe every year it's, it's the 10th. It is, it was World Mental Health Day and what a better subject to get into tonight than world mental health just to celebrate and uh give it the attention it deserves mm -hmm. as that's what this show is all about really trying to promote conversation promote mental health and taking a look or some deep dives into some subjects that we're not always familiar with, but we learn, um, and some that we're overly familiar with, and we, and we discuss and talk about it, which is really the, the, the catalyst, if you will, uh, for promoting that, that stuff and, and uh, bringing it to the forefront, which is what we're all about here. There's no shame in it. There's no uh, looking down. Everybody deals with stuff. Everybody deals with life. I'm dealing with life uh, as it as it stands right now uh, with my sciatic nerve pain. Um, and Gemma is dealing with life, trying to get her medication correct. I've been down that road too. Um, I've mm -hmm. a lot of us have nonsensical nonsense uh good to see you that's glick thanks for stopping in um if you guys aren't following nonsensical nonsense give them a follow they stream their podcast live every monday wednesday saturday uh great show i drop in uh, quite frequently. Sometimes I can chat. Sometimes I just listen in the background while I'm doing things, but I enjoy the show. Good content, good nonsense. So, Mr. Tom Foolery. Uh, hey, Tim. I'm very new to this stream. I come here from a mental health point of view, but I am glad to be here. Uh, it's great to have you. Great to have you. Thanks for coming in. Uh, we do this show every Wednesday night at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, that's when we record it. And then I'll go back and edit it down, put it on YouTube as a more refurbished look. And then, of course, we rip the audio and distribute that through all the major podcast networks. So welcome in. It's good to see you. Glad you could join us. And we hope you enjoy the content. Give us a follow, give us a share, and uh, send us out to the masses so we can keep growing. Uh, we did do an episode on World Mental Health Day in our very first season of the podcast. I do have this somehow disorderly broke into seasons. What I've done is... Um, while uploading to the podcast platforms, I've just made the first 52 episodes, season one, the first, the second 52, season two. So it's a year thing. Mm. Um, obviously, um, with when life happens and we can't stream one week, it's not exactly a year, but it's 52 episodes. So we're in season three right now. Being, uh, we just kicked over after episode 104. Uh, that will give us two, two full years of streams. Oh, my. Yeah. Uh, so we are moving right along. Still growing, still loving it. And I still got Gemma by my side, so she's obviously still into it. I haven't I scared don't her. I feel that easy. <laughs> Wait till we get back into a place where we can uh, do the, the shorts again. I do want to get back into that. I feel like it's um, a fantastic 
addition or or you know little extra boost for the show uh what we do with the shorts if you're not familiar over on the youtube channel now it's not a short like youtube shorts like tiktok reels and what have you uh our shorts are just uh, a five minute condensed version of topic discussed on the hour-long show Mm -hmm. um so this is uh one of those topics that we would probably cover briefly a five minute spat on world mental health day because not a lot of people realize that it is a thing it's a a day every october and uh and just sheds light on the wonders that is all of our mental health. Mr. Tom Foolery, thank you for the tier one subscription. That is awful nice of you. Appreciate it. Like I said, glad to have you here. Glad to have everybody here. I'm glad that you felt comfortable enough to, you know, open up and talk right away. So tonight is kind of a catch-all normally what we do on this show for those of you that are new is we break down one topic in mental health uh for the hour-long show Mm -hmm. you can go back uh on our bio link that i'm sure patty will drop in there for you in the in the comments and you can uh go to the complete series of the show and you can see every topic that we've covered some some of them multiple times and some of them multiple part episodes but today we're going to do a a catch all i found a couple of slides on just simple things like anxiety um stress how to take care of your mental health and uh a look at um our kids mental health because they are very much a part of the game as well, wouldn't you say, Gemma? Oh, very much. And I think that kids especially are like sponges and they absorb what we're feeling probably more than we're aware of. So if our mental health is suffering, then theirs will also. And even though we try and keep a lot of it from them and try and be normal around them, they know when we're off I've learned that a great deal over the years that um, my son has picked up a lot more than I first thought he had and despite trying to hide it for a long time yeah he, he, he knew straight away so they do you can't really hide it from them they know you that is so true and even uh, at a very young age, where they're just starting to understand things, and like you were just saying, they're sponge to everything from from birth. Mm-hmm. Attitudes. I've noticed in Penelope, she can't even uh, string. She's talking, you know, but it's just maybe um, you know words here and there that actually makes sense but she's not stringing sentences together yet or comprehending things other than her name and and stuff like that but you can tell that she's a sponge to her environment especially because i don't know if you can hear her right now but um she's having a bounce in there but you can you can see that she's such a sponge to the environment she's in if Mm. if things are tense you know, you can you can tell that her attitude changes a bit. If things are happy, she's excited, and yeah, you can definitely see it. I'm sure yeah, Thomas yeah. is the same way. Oh, absolutely! And the way you respond to them, generally, they will respond back um, just the same. Like if they ask you something and you're snappy with them, generally you'll get attitude back. It's just the same. You give you get what you give yes um so along with children children not only uh have a a stake in the game as well 
and we're noticing that more and more at a younger age, which is good because things are being addressed at a younger age. I feel like my, for example, my ADHD uh, was not diagnosed until I was in my 20s. Um, I, it, I think that could have probably been picked up on mm. a little sooner, you know, in grade school, uh, which they are indeed trying to uh, do now. We're, we're getting more exams and we're getting more um, insurance coverage for mental health in children mm. uh, or mental health related diagnoses, diagnose, diagnostic care, um, figuring out courses of action for them um, outside of the normal vaccinations and all the, all the stuff they uh, do. And then of course their normal sicknesses that when you're, mm. when you're kids, you're sick all the time, right? Oh God. Yeah. <laughs> get everything in school share all the bugs all the germs right but um, uh, yeah we need to i i know here in the uk we have the nhs but i feel like mental health still has a very long way to go um i'm still trying to get thomas's diagnosis um there's, he's definitely on the spectrum for something mm -hmm. but you can wait years and years and years unless you pay privately. Yeah, that's um, um, <laughs> that's uh, that's still true of some things over here as well. Mm -hmm. um, but like we've talked about in in the show in the past, I really do feel like it's coming it's coming a long way from where it was. I, oh, and I don't I can't speak on 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 the UK's health system in that regard maybe you can speak a little further on that how how far you think they've come or how little um it, definitely mental health as a whole has come on massively it was such a taboo subject before you couldn't you couldn't say like even at work if you had to have some time off work you couldn't say it was for a mental health appointment because they'd be like hang on a minute what what <laughs> are you crazy um yeah, you just have to lie about it. But now it's seen as it's definitely not as taboo as it was. You can more be more open and honest with it, and they are doing more and putting more into it, medication-wise, um, awareness-wise. It's still got a long way to go, but I think the world in general does where mental health is concerned. But we're getting there. It's certainly not as taboo as it was and people are reaching out and opening up. I think since COVID though, it's had a real knock-on effect with mental health. Oh yes. Bursting at the seams. Absolutely. But at, we, we literally saw, I don't want to say we saw people break down, but we literally saw mental health in the forefront when COVID was, you know, a, a big, thing in our lives um of course it's still around right now COVID-19 is still a thing um I don't want to say that or or, or be one of the people that brush it aside because that upsets some folks um but it we are managing it better now and um, when it first came about there was so much uncertainty and there was lockdowns and there was like everything was closed and just you couldn't go see you couldn't even go socialize with your friends sometimes family for fear of possibly getting a loved one sick an elder loved one or something so there was so much uh, uncertainty and that drove the negative aspects on our mental health um, just that uncertainty of what was coming next, how far this was going to go. Um, and, and now, of course, everything is normalizing again. And But out of the shadows came a lot of good from uh, such a terrible pandemic mm. um, and such a terrible year, year and a half that we spent essentially locked down we did streamline a lot of things because of it, such as telehealth medicine, you know, 
uh, visiting your doctors via Zoom versus mm. having to go in person for uh, the little stuff that you don't need to actually be seen in person for just to talk just to chat it's still an appointment you know but we've we've really streamlined that and then of course other things um like ordering food was streamlined you know i'm not talking about doordash well that's great it's expensive and i don't do that very much i've got to have a particular bout of laziness to do that um, but it does happen occasionally um just ordering food and going and picking it up is has been streamlined uh, my favorite thing is the haircuts now. I can go, I can schedule my haircut right now, or I can check in from my house. It'll tell me, be here at, be here in 20 minutes. And I can plan accordingly, show up, sit down. I don't have to wait there, you know. So these things, um, where where I used to go in, it was a crapshoot. You'd sit there for an hour just to get your hair buzzed. Okay, um, you've come on further than we have, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> is that right yeah 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 like yeah you just turn up at the hairdresser still i mean if i wanted an appointment and i'd have a current call yeah i'd absolutely have to book an appointment weeks in advance usually but for a guy like i took thomas and things and you just go around I, as far as i'm aware i mean don't quote me on it i'm not familiar with men's hairdressers and things but as far as i'm aware you can just still walk in you there's no appointment system um, yeah. To most, I mean, if you're going to pay a lot of money for it, then maybe. Uh, so, I mean, the idea behind it, at least here, was when when COVID was still uh, a big thing, and um, we were first starting to venture back out into the world. They didn't want a bunch of people in the waiting room, so they found a way to schedule, or you just check in, wait at your house essentially, or in your car if you were in the area, and then mm. come in when your time was was ready um yeah. and uh mr tom fuller he says the weird thing is tim the act of booking and going for a haircut can be quite therapeutic it's something that is within your control and that is very true uh i use self-care i use haircuts as self-care mm. all the time that that is my uh that is my bit of self-care uh i I don't have like an extensive haircut. I usually get the whole thing. I get a zero on the sides and a one on the top, but then the place I go to gives you a nice massaging shampoo, a hot towel and, and the works. It is complete self care and I'm happy to sit and do it uh, because it does relax you. Mm. Glick says, uh, the great thing about an old school barber shop, you don't mind the long cause because everybody knows each other uh -huh. and you get to BS and catch up. That's absolutely true. Yeah. Um, yeah, I find that as much. Certainly here or in larger cities, like most people these days don't even know their neighbors. And that's sad. Mm -hmm. It is sad because I know when we were like here, when there was like the um, all the stuff with the royal family and everything. Mm -hmm. Years and years ago, you look back and you see massive street parties, everybody getting involved with everybody else. Mm -hmm. And now you barely say hello to your neighbor and stuff. I mean, I couldn't tell you the name of my next door neighbor on one side. I know them very well on the other side, and I know a few of them. But it's true, I don't have a clue who ma the majority of them are. And when I go into a shop, it's like, we live in such a digital era now where you're on your phone all the time or you got your ear pods or headphones in and you don't really interact with other people. So yeah, it's, it's sad. So, I mean, I guess there is, um, while I'm, I'm praising the goodness of everything like this that came from COVID that we streamlined from COVID, there is actually, as you're pointing out, a, a downside. Uh, there's a downside to everything, a good side, a bad side, Sure, I oh, mean, yeah, we can yeah. here and and pick things apart, but uh, for the most part, I have to say personally, I enjoy uh, being able to just roll in, grab my food, and roll out. 
Yeah, no long waits. And now, stuff. if it's if it's something like uh, Glick was talking about with uh, an old school barber shop where you know everybody and it is BS and 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 having a good time, that's different. You want to spend some time there, and it, it for guys. Um, I can't speak for all guys, of course, but for for me, uh, it is a therapeutic self care mission, uh, essentially, to go get the haircut. Uh, it feels good. It's a uh, it's a nice re- release for stress, uh, especially when they hit that massaging shampoo. Uh, you gotta love that. And uh, I've, I've not seen that. But yeah, okay. it's it's uh, it's worth it's worth every penny. And uh, just like women would go get a mani pedi, same thing. We just don't paint our nails; we get our hair did. I need to grow mine before I can uh, get there with that one. I um, anxiety did my did my nails. <laughs> uh, Hattie says many food places have apps, and instead of waiting in line, you can order ahead and pick it up uh, on your drive home. Indeed, and that's what I I kind of enjoy. Uh, when you're when you're pressed for time, or you've had a long day, and yeah. you, you don't really just want to stand there in line and wait and order and then wait for them to cook and all that, it's just something like that. Just takes uh, a little bit of the the ease the day a bit, I guess I should say, mm-hmm. and that's nice. Uh, let us transition a little bit here into we can talk anxiety since we kind of were already hitting on anxiety uh let's take a look real quick see what we got here just how anxiety presents itself in different ways we can talk about it for a bit Gemma okay have we got any slides I'm gonna um fumble over tonight I wonder oh uh I I don't think I you know I was quick with them tonight because there was a lot going on. I didn't, I didn't intentionally pick one out. So we'll see if anything comes about. Okay. Anxiety presents itself in many different ways. So the desire to control people and events, difficulty getting to sleep, feeling agitated or angry, defiance and other challenging behaviors. Kids. Um, having high expectations for self, including school and work and sports. Avoiding activities or events, including things like school. Pain like stomach aches and headaches. Struggling to pay attention and focus. An intolerance of uncertainty, nearly. Crying and difficulty managing emotions. Over planning for situations and events and feeling worried about situations and events. This is actually something that my wife and I were just discussing yesterday, I believe, on, on, or we were going to the store and just chatting in the car. And of course, for, I had just gone to the doctor again for my, my leg, uh, the sciatic nerve pain is getting the better of me. And I just, I can't put the mask on anymore. I needed to go, we needed to start towards the next step, whether it be cortisone shots or surgery. Uh, Anyway, I've got an MRI scheduled now and I go see a spine doctor specialist in two weeks. Mm. Uh, But in the meantime, I've been put on prednisone again which kind of takes the the it eases the pain um, it strengthens what it needs to do uh so i'm sitting comfortably right now uh which is good um now we're we're just gonna make it to the mri and we'll see what what's really going on but anyway with uh with that doctor visit, I also was put on some, I've been on gabapentin mm. previously. I've, I've, I've been on it for a while, but that was more for anxiety at the time, mental health related. But gabapentin, mm. uh, as we were discussing, my wife and I, is just like a catch-all drug, it seems. 
Um, yeah. and do a little bit of everything. Pre gabapentin and gabapentin, yeah. Yeah. But, but, so, yeah. Just like gabapentin, anxiety presents itself. It's a catch all kind of thing. Um, you can see how many different ways it affects us to, uh, from controlling to agitation to uh, focus. And then, of course, defiance, pain, crying, managing our own lives. It is, it is there in so many different forms and fashions. And uh, I've said it before, anxiety is a good thing when it's, you know, minor. It's mm. anxiety is a fancy word for worry. And when we worry about things, we get things done. If we're worried about paying the bills, we're going to pay the bills. Uh, yeah, we're going to yeah. find a way to get that done, right? You can so help worry, you get okay. for things as well. Like if you've got an interview and things, as long as it's not over worrying, then yeah, you can help. Right. You it's when we, sure. it's when we let it overtake our lives mm -hmm. and uh, that's when it becomes an issue. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but and like I mentioned before, with those, um, with like with children and things and anxiety, a lot of those that are in that slide are representative of um, children and the way they portray anxiety as well. Indeed, uh, and a special thank you again to Mr. Tom Poolery for gifting a sub to. The community and Mr. Med, thank you so much for the five bits. As always, we appreciate all support for the show. Every everything donated to the show goes right back into the show, goes towards our stream yard and expenses for the website and what have you. Just trying to make the show better. So we do appreciate it. And thank you again to all of you. Especially thanks for sharing us out because that's something everybody can do for free and it really does help the numbers of the show. So thanks. Um, let's move towards the differences between stress and anxiety. I thought this was pertinent because it was something else that my wife and I was talking about when we were discussing anxiety and, and actually more so gabapentin but anxiety of course came up yeah okay so this looks like the uh the differences between the stress and then the anxiety so on the stress side usually a response to an external situation it goes away once the situation is resolved and it can be positive or negative and it motes you motes motivates you to study for a test. There we go. I stumbled on the uh, easier word. That's right. Okay. And then anxiety, uh, generally an internal, so that's how you react to the stress. It involves persistent feeling of dread that doesn't go away. And it is a constant, even when there is no threat. Yeah. So stress is uh, displayed more externally. And anxiety is obviously felt internally. Mm -hmm. um, we terrorize ourselves with anxiety, whereas stress emanates off of us, or, or yeah, emanates off of us, and can sour the mood for everybody else around us. When uh, somebody's stressed out, you you feel that coming from them, and you you know when somebody's stressed. Um, it's not always apparent. When somebody's going through a lot of anxiety, unless they're in full-blown uh, anxiety attack or panic attack, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. that's when, of course, you can visually see the um, bad sides of too much anxiety and and what that does. Um, yeah. But I think stress, stress is quite easy to see. I know personally myself slamming stuff around like. Nah. Cursing people under your breath, slamming stuff, doors, and yeah, 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 that's quite easy to see. Anxiety, not so much. <laughs> um, so, stress uh, here's an interesting uh, 
point. Stress can be, this is kind of what I was just talking about. Uh, stress can be positive uh, or negative. It motivates you to study for a test, right? So they're saying stress is the motivator to get things done. Like I was just talking about with the bills um, and anxiety uh, is constant. Even when there is no threat, um, doesn't really uh, jive with the counterpart of stress, but I just, I thought that was interesting to bring up. Uh, they're saying that stress is the uh, motivator here. I still tend to think that the worry gets me motivated. Um, certainly when you are worrying about stuff, there is a, a level of stress that goes along with that. So, I mean, the two can go hand in hand. You can make that argument. Well, yeah, worrying about what's going to happen if you don't do it. Like, if you don't pay the bills, you're worrying that if you don't pay the bills, you're going to get... Um, yeah, the consequences that off. come. Yeah, yeah, so it can be both. Whereas right. the stress of having to... I think the stress more is, like now in the financial situation, the bills and stressing about it. Will I have enough money? Am I going to be able to afford it? Whereas the anxiety, the worry of it is like, what's going to happen if I don't pay it? I'll get cut off. My gas and electric will be cut off or I'll be thrown out of my house. Or like the consequences of not doing the action. I think that's probably a yes. better way of explaining it, maybe. Absolutely. And it, it's exactly, you know, what what comes from our actions are con uh, for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction right mm -hmm. so there's definitely going to be even when we do something completely correct or right down the middle straight laced on the ball we still worry that we there was something wrong right isn't that funny how you could practice something and then just completely nail it and you're still going to Monday morning quarterback yourself as if you nitpick the small little things that uh, nobody else probably even noticed, you know? Um, so, yeah, a little bit of chit-chat on anxiety never hurts. Uh, we got to get back into another episode of that. There's so much to talk about with anxiety, just like we've done four or so episodes on depression alone. And there's mm. still a shit ton to talk about with depression, um, same with anxiety. We're going to have to bring that back soon. I've got it on the list, actually. Um, next up, what is mental health and what isn't mental health? Okay, so mental health is important, something everyone has. Intre in uh, increasing in oh my goodness increasing increasingly surely that means increasingly like there we go you are you a... okay yeah i'm struggling on a word i'm sure that means increasingly increasingly linked to and um, probably i'm in, i'm struggling to read this inseparable from physical health oh my goodness <laughs> intrinsically um, on, linked intrinsically and now see that makes sense now oh my god just on yeah. uh there you got this word here on a continuum a continuum yeah. yes this is this the one you <laughs> i didn't pick it at, or i just saw it and i was like just this lucky. Is a good one. <laughs> just lucky worth making time for uh part of being human something we need to look after positive and negative changeable complex and real and then we have the mental so, health hold on real quick on. Uh, just to recap after Gemma had a stroke um that everything there was mental health is so it's important um mm -hmm. it is positive and negative there are good aspects uh, and there's bad. Of course, we always think of the bad. When we talk mental health, it's usually what? Like some kind of diagnosis or, or something, you know, that we're struggling with. 
just always thought of as bad cognitive distortions. So now I'll throw it back to Gemma. We're going to go over what mental health isn't, and then we'll kind of take a look at the two. And we'll try not to, uh, or I'll try not to stumble over this one. <laughs> so mental health isn't a sign of weakness, shameful, all in your mind, always something negative, something you decide to have, something to think about only when it feels broken an interchangeable term with mental illness, feeling good all the time, something you can snap out of, fixed, and fake news. Fake news. Um, fake news, I feel like uh, quite a buzzword. Family. What's that? I need to send this to my family. All of those isn't things, like yeah. weakness, shameful, all in your head, um, like something you can just snap out of. That's my mom's favorite saying, just snap out of it. <laughs> well, see, and that's the way it was in her generation and mm -hmm. you know, my parents' generation. It was just a snap out of it kind of deal. Now we're learning more about it and we're learning that it isn't, especially when you, especially when you wind up checking yourself into a rehab facility with a substance abuse problem. <laughs> Uh, you can't just snap out of. I tried. There was no snapping. Yeah. Uh, but the big one there, mental health isn't a it, an interchangeable term with mental illness. That is probably the biggest one there. There is quite a difference between the two. And I will, I did not pull up any slides on that. Uh, however, I will post a follow-up to that in the Discord uh, because it is uh, something to look at if you're interested uh, in additional reading. There is uh, quite a difference between the two, and mm -hmm. it's, it's I, I recommend it. I'll put in a little article in the Discord. Um, so if, if you want to join the Discord, as always, it will be in the chat. It has been in the chat, and uh, we highly recommend it. That's our our own little mental health hour community there, um, and it's a great place to uh, join us after the show and during the week because that's probably the easiest place. I'm on there frequently. I haven't been posting a lot lately, uh, but I still get on and uh, look around at different things. But I will post something on the mental health, mental illness thing. Mr. Tom Fullery says, I'm not ill, but I need to work on my mental fitness. Uh, I find for me the term mental fitness is really positive. And that is a, a great example of how we can interchange words to appease the receptors in the brain to make it sound more powerful, make it sound more appeasing, appealing, and that, that does help. So thank you for bringing that. Now let's take a look at children real quick. Here's 10 ways to help your mm -hmm. child look after their mental health. Uh, right, yeah, so we'll work from the bottom and work round clockwise. So, uh, 10 ways to help look after your uh, child and their mental health. So, relaxation. Help your child to relax. Teach them relaxation skills, such as deep breathing. I use the um, Calm app as well when he's sleeping, just to sort of help with that. Uh, play. So, promote play and creativity among your child, allowing them to explore. Sleep. Support your child to build positive sleep habit, habits. Develop good sleep environment with your child. Uh, role model. Be a positive mental health role model. Demonstrate positive behaviours which your child can learn from you. Talking. So support your child to talk about their problems and how they're feeling. Coping skills. Work with your child to develop coping skills, 
support your child to learn skills such as problem solving and throughout challenging. So very important. Uh, challenging. So very important to start that at a young age because mm -hmm. especially when they don't understand or can't verbalize their uh, that they are upset. It's just mm -hmm. constant whining and uh, trying to teach or impart coping skills with not getting your way all the time or something not being uh, mm -hmm. right in their head or whatever. Because, uh, you know, like I said, they can't verbalize it yet. We'll, we'll work through this, start that at a young age, and it's uh, a lot easier to cope with things as they start aging and can use their words and uh, comprehend situations and such. And Sorry. Norm as well. If it's something that's the norm from a young age, then it's easier to continue with something that they've already been doing than to start something else. Like the saying goes, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. If you are doing it from the get-go, then it's a lot easier for them to continue. As they get older, they do seem to not like talking as much and opening up as much. That's just the part of being a kid and growing up. But, um, so, sorry, if you let them know, always that you're there for them that you're going to support them you, you can talk they can talk to you and things and it's a lot easier if you've done all this from an early age mm -hmm. and it, um well-being so promote healthy eating and physical activity exercise is a great tool to boost mood and reduce stress and anxiety uh self-care make sure your child has time and space to look after themselves involve yourself in their hobbies autonomy allow your child to make their own decisions this will help build resilience and then relationships support your child to build positive relationships with friends and family so they're all some really good tips and things to do yeah. to help support children's mental health and just uh just some simple things as well. Uh, play. We play with our kids all the time, right? Um, mm -hmm. And it promotes that creativity, like it says. Sleep. A positive sleep schedule, a positive sleep environment. It's so helpful to the adolescent, especially mm -hmm. when sleep is half their life at this age. They're not pulling. 21 hour days yet with work and school and such and even self-care i mean we just talked about self-care and the importance of that in, in for everybody and uh even children uh, need self-care mm -hmm. we'll uh we'll move forward to back into an adult phase um i mean this could be looked at for kids as well but building your own uh, mental health support. Yeah, okay, so how to build your mental health support network. Number one, head. Look for someone who you can relax and unwind with. Number two, mouth. Have someone you can regularly chat to, someone you can easily pick up the phone to and ask for advice. Number three, shoulders. Make sure you have someone who you can share your problems with. Someone who you aren't afraid to talk things, talk to about things. And number four, hips. It's important to get out and have fun and pleasure. Find someone who you can do things with. Number five, ears. Develop a relationship with someone who will listen and take in information. Number six, eyes. Find someone who watches out for you, a friend or family member who you can trust and rely on. Number seven, heart. Make sure you have someone who cares for you, someone who loves you for who you are. And number eight, legs. You want someone who can motivate, support and encourage you. Someone who will keep you going when things are tough. I can guarantee that you nobody wants my right leg right now. <laughs> um, but 
the uh, the interesting thing as they put this slide together is to note how sensory is so important. Um, the five senses mm. uh, to our mental health, to to our day to day or day to day life, uh, what we hear, see, smell, touch, and trigger. Uh, our mental health in a positive or negative way. It doesn't, it's not all negative when that's another word trigger tends to get the downside of, of um, when you hear that word, you immediately think we're triggering something like PTSD or something, but tr you can trigger a positive memory as well. Mm -hmm. But head, mouth, eyes, ears, heart, all of these things uh, that we that Gemma just read about can help build a, a healthy mental health support network for yourself. All of these slides, as we transition into the last one I have for this evening, will be available on our Discord, uh, so you can take a look at them. And I also post the links to where I got them on the YouTube video description so you can actually visit the website and if something uh catches your eye uh feel free to check it out in the on the website because there's oftentimes some of these come off of like facebook pictures so there's no articles but oftentimes there's articles that go along with these and they're mm -hmm. very they're very interesting catch myself down a wormhole just finding slides for the evening's episodes trailing off into some article. Let's take a look at this last one. Okay, so some tips to boost your mental health today. So start your day with a green tea. Green tea is linked to lower rates of depression. Show some love to someone in your life. Close quality relationships are key for a happy, healthy life. Go ahead and yawn all you want. Oh, I was doing that earlier. I start talking about yawning and I'm going to do it again. Yeah. <laughs> to improving alertness and mental efficiency. I'm trying not to do it. Write down all your worries. This will help you feel calm and productive. Okay. As you notice, you say the word yawn and you do it. I thought you were getting ready to just <laughs> no, no, yawning. There we go. Question your lack of motivation. Reflect on where the dread is coming from. Talk it out with a friend. So someone who understands you and can help you feel more confident. Don't forget to treat yourself. A good breakfast or lunch will keep you feeling energized. Ease up on Mondays. Delegate your work across the week instead. So that doesn't mean not do anything on a Monday. It just means do it throughout the week and, and it also doesn't mean day. it also doesn't mean push your work off onto somebody else because that's often no <laughs> what when you hear delegate you hear you think oh that means i can just assign it to somebody else yeah we're not saying that we're not telling you to just do <laughs> go and give it to someone else yeah so just some more tips on boosting your mental health uh self-care you see in a lot of these Go ahead and yawn all you want. It's actually very good for you. It's uh, it's it's sending more oxygen to the brain, which is is obviously deprived, which is why you're yawning. Uh, your it's body so says, "Give me some." <laughs> your brain says, "Give me some of that O2." Journaling. Write down all your worries. We talk ad nauseum about journaling on this show and the importance mm. of it and how well it, it it helps. Something new I haven't seen, start your day with a green tea. I, that's the first time I've seen that as a tip in anything we've discussed on these 108 episodes. Green tea is linked to a lower rate of the lower rates of depression. Fascinating. Mm. I'm going to have to look into that. And maybe there'll be more to come on that. There's your next rabbit hole. 
Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> what I'm talking about. Like some of this stuff is, I still find it very interesting and I'm still learning. We are not professionals here. We're learning alongside you guys. We're just hosting a podcast where we can all come in and talk about it. Now, now had it, Yanni. Great. <laughs> well, we're, uh, we're getting close to wrap up time, so we can all go to bed. Yeah. Uh, however, uh, I did want to stop talking about you. Only. <laughs> <laughs> I did want to go back boring. real quick before we do wrap it up. I wanted to go back and discuss uh, one thing I thought about with Penelope. One thing that my wife and I have discussed that is kind of worrisome a little bit. I mean, nothing we can't get fixed uh, down the road with some uh, nursery school and, and uh, kindergarten once she starts getting the hang of things. But her social uh, skills have been severely cramped because of her coming into this world in times of COVID uh, where we were shut in. There wasn't a whole lot of visiting. Um, it was... One or two people were allowed to visit at the hospital, which normally when a baby is born, your whole goddamn family's there and everybody's got balloons and everybody's sick and, uh, you know, all this. But it's a big to do, right? Uh, it just wasn't the case when she was born uh, because we were still, it was more towards the end. Uh, it wasn't like right in the thick of it, but yeah, um, still. people are still, we still, or maybe it's not, that we're still um, afraid to go out or socialize or do these things. But I think myself included, we became really kind of, we've adapted to being homebodies and we don't just, I certainly since I quit drinking as well, I'm not as apt to go out. You could twist my arm and when I was drinking, and I'd be right behind you. Yeah, there's going to be beer there. All right, I'm in, you know, but especially with the added uh, times that we spent under lockdown, and uh, I think we all kind of came accustomed to it, and it's not, we're, we're not socializing as much, uh, which has cramped her style in coming up mm. uh, and developing social skills, because even when grandma comes over, uh, she just bursts into tears somebody news here that means mommy and daddy are leaving it's it, her her world is just myself my wife and her siblings um in this house and that's you know that's a, that's gonna change as she gets she's only a year and a half so she oh, uh, it does get better. thomas was just the same because it was just the two of us all yeah. the time and at school initially they literally had to rip him from me mm, that's like, what we're worried about awful. Be a, but a honestly condition. one or two days and within 10 minutes he was fine anyway and that's the thing yeah absolutely <laughs> like uh if grandma comes over to babysit or or her aunt karen comes over to babysit uh, uh just full-on waterworks sobbing bawling screaming kicking and then uh, Casey and I'll leave, and no sooner are we out the door, probably 30 seconds to a minute later, oh, she's fine, she's happy. I, we get a text. Oh, she, it's like you guys never leave. Yeah. She's yeah. having a ball. So it's just, it's, uh, it's something we're concerned about, we're keeping an eye on, but again, it flows right with that children's mental health. Um, mm -hmm. But it has now that everybody's good and bored and tired and yawning. Oh, um, I can't stop now. We'll go ahead and start wrapping this thing up. Thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, thanks for listening, uh, as always, on the podcast. Uh, another great episode. This one, these these uh, free flow shows are kind of my favorite to do because they can go any which way. And we talked a little bit about COVID. We talked a little bit about anxiety, uh, depression. Mm -hmm medications uh so we got into a little bit of everything which is what i wanted for this world mental health day special Try to remember to do these we missed last year but i i completely forgot about it but we'll try and do these every year 
Um, as Gemma has made mention to me earlier, it is also ADHD Awareness Month and Domestic Violence Awareness Month. I can say that we'll probably do an episode on domestic violence, but we'll probably hold off on ADHD because we recently did something on ADHD and we have a guest interview coming down the pike on the subject as well. Mm -hmm. So we'll probably hold off on that, but we'll definitely touch back on domestic violence. Mm -hmm. Um, Probably the last episode, uh, the last Wednesday of the month. Yeah. Um, All right. So let's get into some community calendar as we always do. And we'll wrap this thing up Uh, tonight. Join Jim in Chicagoland for Catalyst. his Wednesday night candlelight broadcast right here on Twitch. If you like a good conversation, uh, some good vibes and good, good, uh, good people, just uh, give Jim in Chicagoland a follow and he'll, he'll go live around the 11 o'clock Eastern standard time hour for his show catalyst. Uh, very good show. Um, of course, our good buddy, Array of Sunshine, uh, he is on YouTube now. Click the link for uh, the YouTube channel there. Take you to his positive vibes, positive stories, all kinds of good stuff from around the globe. Um, give him a follow, support Ray. He's one of the mods on the Mental Health Hour. And uh, him, him and Hattie, we appreciate you guys very much. Gemma, my co-host, she has her own stuff. Uh, do you want to touch on anything coming down the pike? Um, yeah, I'm train cooking and trains and things. I'm not quite sure what day it is. We missed this month, okay, because of like lots of stuff, but yeah, there's going to be some more cooking, some more so um, cooking, um, baking, crafting, ASMR. That's we're still waiting on. Uh, and we're, we're we've been waiting on that for 108 fucking episodes. <laughs> How about that? Um, yeah. Pardon my... That's my pen drive with them on, so I'm going to have to record a load of them again. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> give Gemma a follow there. Her bio link and her YouTube channel is right there. Of course, you can give her a follow on Twitch as well. Uh, the Beardo Weirdo Show is back. I need to I make a note and change that, Hattie. You said it's Thursdays now, right? Thursdays. Uh, I believe around the 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock hour, Eastern Standard Time. I have just made a note, and I'll get that changed on the commands. Although, I think, Hattie, I, I think I gave you editor hours. I think you can go in there and change it, too, if you want. Feel free to give it a try. Um, and then, for all things Bunny, our good friend, still in mourning over the loss of her beloved puppy cat. Um, Give our friend Ella the Bunny Mom a follow on Twitch if you don't already. And check out her store, MyBunnyValentine.com. Um, and use my promo code FIREDUDE15 to save 15% on any of your purchases. Uh, she streams here on Twitch late nights. Uh, and as I said, uh, it, she had uh, her her rabbit of, her rescue rabbit of 10 years or so um, passed away not too long ago. So... Stop in and give her a shout, give her a uh, a follow, and, and give her some love from us here at the Mental Health Hour. She's on too late for my ass anymore, but <laughs> as I used to stream nights with her, and now that Penelope's here, I can I can barely make it to nine o'clock. <laughs> so, alrighty, can't beat kids for getting you back to bed. <laughs> um. And that is all. Oh, yeah, I didn't even put them up. Oops. There. Yeah, I can't do it. Normally, no. I will do it as it's coming up so well, that I can find it, but I you can't. Guys, do- <laughs> you guys are in the chat. You can see them. Um, all right. Those that are not in the chat when it replays, but yeah. <laughs> no, the chat replays. If not on watch- YouTube, it don't. Oh, not on YouTube, no. Yeah. But that's a good point. Uh, we will see everybody back here next week. Uh, and I will have a promo out for you shortly. Mm -hmm. Uh, Thanks again for all the bits, the subs, the love. 
the shares, the follows. Go on, check out uh, Nonsensical Nonsense. They're going live right now. We're out of here. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. Yeah. Bye.